Remember that damn list of ruled out and potential features that I just never seem to stop talking about? Well, we're back. Today we're going to be going over 14 more things Supercell will probably never add into Clash of Clans. This includes straight up ruled out features, but I also decided to include some of the dumbest ones in the Clash Wiki because some of them are really ridiculous. I've also tried to find or create concept images myself for all of these so you can get a feel of what the future is and what I'm talking about. Also, one more thing, this is supposed to be a part two to a video I did a while back, so in case you haven't watched that one, links will be down below and it'll also be at the end of the video. So let's get right into it. A lightning rod to absorb lightning spells. Okay, it sounds cool, but then again, everyone would put one of these in defenses that they don't want destroyed and it'll probably become very OP. Back in the day, people used to lighten your storages and get away with a nice portion of it until Supercell fixed the issue by giving storages a lightning shield. Now imagine adding even more stuff into the game that protects more buildings from one spell. The lightning spell wasn't a mistake. Like, we don't have to try and erase it from history. It's meant to be able to damage or destroy buildings, and in my opinion, after so many years, it's pretty balanced. Ability to transfer a revenge to a clan member or public hit list. Um, yeah, no. The revenge button is already a questionable feature in the game, with the developer even admitting it was nearly removed once due to how useless it was at higher town halls. Adding this feature wouldn't really solve any problems either. The revenge button was made as a way to get a revenge on a player that attacked you, and it just makes zero sense to have someone else get that revenge for you or put some random base on a public hit list like what? I'm sure it would be a great feature in other games, but aside from it being useless to a certain degree, it also doesn't fit in the game. Like, a hit list? A revenge is between you and the enemy. And that's pretty much how it'll stay. Rate base feature. <laughs> this one's kind of funny. Imagine having such a bad rating because you're rushed. <laughs> ah, no. I believe the reason this is ruled out is because it would be pretty ineffective. Okay, when have you seen everyone in Clash of Clans take the game serious? There would be a lot of trolls who give you a bad rating just for the laughs. Or if you upset someone, they'd probably give you a bad rating even though the base you have is pretty decent. There would be no way of knowing if a base is actually good or bad. It seems cool, and I'd actually enjoy it, but adding this as an actual feature is just a fantasy. It's better to discuss a base design in the clan chat or on a forum where you can discuss and give feedback instead of just rating the base. Back button and matchmaking for accidental next clicks. Perhaps cost double the fee to return. Okay, this one ain't that bad. I can see myself using a feature like this nearly every day. Or actually, every match. There's been many times where I've skipped a base with one million of each, and I just wish there was a way to go back. But there isn't. I think Darian gave his own input on this topic in an AMA, but there's been so many AMAs over the years, it's pretty much looking for a needle in a haystack. I think the issue with this is that Clash of Clans has millions of players, so when you hit next, somebody is probably already looking at the base you skipped. It's not the same as going forward where the game looks for an available base. I'm sure it's possible, but the chances of this being added are very slim. Mistakes happen, yes. And unfortunately, if you skip a pace, well, that's not something you can fix. Only thing you can do, if you want, is just hold this L for me. Donating or trading resources and gems to other players. I know, it sounds cool, it would be helpful, and imagine asking for some gems from your rich friend, right? As usual though, everything on this list has a reason on why it's been ruled out. Firstly, it's highly exploitable. You can easily funnel your resources. For example, having your Town Hall 12 account give your other mini accounts, which is at Town Hall 4, some golden elixir. I mean, you max out pretty fast, eh? Sure, they can have limits and restrictions in place, but also a second reason why. 
The whole point of playing is to attack bases so you can build your own and defend it. There's no good enough reason for Supercell to put in the effort into something like this. Add a troop battle mode in which only troops fight with no defenses or buildings. This isn't necessarily a bad idea and it hasn't been ruled out, but it's just that it's already been done by the company you're asking. It wouldn't make much sense to do all this work to pretty much bring a Clash Royale experience into Clash of Clans. I mean, you can just download Clash Royale and there you go. Most troops in Clash of Clans are in Clash Royale, so yeah. If Clash Royale didn't exist, this would have been an awesome game mode to have, but as we said, it's already been done and there's no need to do it again. Clan War Gambling. Bet on winning clan with gems during war. If you win, you get double gems, etc. This isn't a ruled out idea, but it probably won't be added either. Gambling has a bad reputation in the past couple of years. This is because child gambling is frowned upon. In fact, some games have removed their gambling features altogether. The thing is, many countries have banned games for having gambling features. Mostly these games have had loot boxes where you pay a currency to open a box and see what you get, kind of like a lottery or <laughs> gambling. Similarly, a future to bet on a clan in a war in Clash of Clans is the equivalent of sports betting, where you bet on which team you think is going to win. So yeah, like I said, it isn't ruled out, but it's definitely something Supercell will probably never add especially in a game that a lot of kids play. Bonus award if the attacker skips your village. Partial payment to you on the match fee. Um, this ain't it, Chief. I can think of an easy exploit for this in two seconds. Just have your storages empty and see how many times you get skipped. You'll basically get rich off of just people skipping your dry ass base. It's a cool concept, yes, but I understand why it's been ruled out. It's just one of those things that sounds cool on paper, but if we actually had this feature, it would either be A, useless, B, unbalanced, or C, a waste of developer's time. I'm sure some people out there would love this to be a thing, and I'm not trying to rain on your parade, but when you think about it a few times over and over, it's just like, why? Privately contact clan members. We've talked about separate chats before, like a co-leader chat or a sister clan chat, and I've already mentioned that these features have been discussed by Supercell. Although they haven't been directly ruled out, it's been confirmed that it's not a priority, and it'll be a nightmare to implement in the game. Now, privately contacting a member, on the other hand, is just completely bizarre and unnecessary. If you need to talk to someone in private, just, I don't know, download Discord or Facebook. There's no need to add a private one-on-one -on -one chat in a game. Like, come on. I know some might think this is a cool and neat feature and that's totally fine, but we just don't need this feature and it's highly unlikely they'll ever add this. Botany Research up spawn rate of obstacles and or increase in chance of gems when removing. You could have just asked for more gems. This is another rolled out feature that doesn't add much to the game. Some bases don't even spawn any trees or bushes because the amount of special obstacles they have is too much. Hint hint, I haven't seen a bush or a tree in like at least three years. This would only be useful to someone who keeps their bases clean of any obstacles and just wants more to spawn to get more gems. We rarely get any features that gives us more free gems, and the idea is just unnecessary. Increase clan size, maybe 75 or 100 members. This is a very common request, and I'm sure Clash of Clans developers are tired of hearing the same damn thing. Clans in Clash of Clans has had the same amount of members forever, and adding some now would need some serious adjustments made to clan wars, clan games, leaderboards, and a lot more. Sure, it would be cool to have more members, I'm not saying it's a dumb idea, but it's been ruled out over and over, and like, you know, developers have clearly stated that this will never get added. Something like this is just not something you change nine years later, you know? 
Ability to assign 5 or so of your own troops to defend your town hall. Same AI as clan castle and a smaller radius. Uh, yeah, no, you don't want to do that. I can already see myself adding 3 packas and 2 golems around my town hall. This is another one of those features that sounds cool on paper, but it would be a nightmare to balance. You'd be basically adding more defense to your town hall, which would either be too OP or completely unnecessary. At higher town halls, you already have a defense on top of your town hall, which can already be OP at times. That's as far of a beefy town hall that we need, okay? Don't start adding more stuff to a town hall. I can't see a day where Supercell changes their minds and adds this. Release a hero for every troop type. Okay. <laughs> Why on earth do we need a hero for every troop? You could have said, like, I don't know, Wizard King something. But just said every troop. What would be the point of having a Goblin King or a Witch Queen? Giant King, Hog Rider King, it's just too much. There's a reason why Clash of Clans has only added 4 in the past 9 years. God damn, this game is old. Maybe when in development they thought a Barbarian and Archer would be a good hero, but the other two have no resemblance to other troops. They're original. So if Supercell was ever going to add that many heroes, which is highly unlikely, but let's just say they did, it wouldn't be like existing troops, it would be something original. Have war donations count? This has been requested forever, but you have to understand why it's not a thing. I believe I've already mentioned this like five times this year and I apologize for repeating myself, but there's a lot of videos where this topic comes up. So I'm going to try and explain it very, very briefly. Basically, it's just easily exploitable. You can simply donate to someone in war, they've removed those troops, and you donate again. This would of course help you boost your XP, donation count, and if you haven't completed it, count toward the friend in need achievements. And that's why it's been ruled out and won't get added. It's pretty simple, eh? So guys, I think that should be it for these 14 more features that Supercell won't add to Clash of Clans. Like I said in the beginning of the video, some of these have been rolled out, and some of these are just ideas that I thought were a little bit ridiculous. I'm not sure if there will ever be a part 3, but in case there is, just check my playlist and it'll be somewhere on there. As always, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching. Have a gaming out. Peace.